Welcome back to the WAC Basketball Preview Day presented by Hercules Tires. I'm Rachel V. Hill in the WAC Digital Network Studios. Excited to be joined by the women's head coach at Dixie State, J.D. Gustin, as well as guards Kesley Stevenson and London Pavlica. How is everybody? Oh, it seems like everybody is muted. There we go. We, we Perfect. Okay. How is everyone? We're good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Of course. And welcome to the WAC. My first official congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we're, uh, we're excited to be here. Ladies, I want to ask you first, who are you looking forward to most going up in conference play? Um, definitely California Baptist. So we see another ranked one, but um, we're ready for I I'm personally ready for, you know, anybody. So. Yeah, same with uh, London. I'm ready for everyone, but personally, UVU um, and state, and knowing a lot of girls on the team as well. So. <laughs> the coaches and media picked your team to finish eighth. How does that chip on your shoulder motivate you going into this season, ladies? Um, that's very motivating, honestly. Um, we're going to go in. Like I've mentioned um, in the past, we, we're working hard every day, and we're taking every day um, as a uh, to get better, honestly. And yeah, we're, we're really excited to compete and, and uh, perform, so. Coach, for you, how surprising is it being the new team in the WAC to be picked eighth? Oh, Rachel, it doesn't matter to us. Like, you know, preseason polls are for folks like you, you know, media, which, you know, we respect and value, but um, yeah, no, I've, I've coached teams that's been picked first and last, and, and at the end of the year, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. One of the teams that you'll be taking on is BYU at Burns Arena. How does that matchup help set up success for the rest of the season? Yeah, we're excited about that. Um, we're, we're really grateful to Coach Juddy and, and, and uh, BYU for, for coming down here. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's something that we hope to do uh, for um, years to come. We like that relationship with them. We feel like they have one of the, the top programs um, on the West Coast. And, and again, to have them in our own building is really a big deal uh, for our program and uh, our community. Kesley, you're one of the one returning starters as a senior. How do you improve your role as a leader this, se or this season? Um, honestly, my biggest thing is being the best teammate. With this whole COVID thing going on, um, we don't really know if we have the next day or not. And so <clears throat> being the best teammate and um, Helping everyone get better helps me be better as well. London, for you, how has Kesley herself helped you get better as a player? Well, she definitely leads by example, and she shows, you know, great characteristics. And I know everyone looks up to her, and I do as well. And um, she has, like, this, you know, attitude of – she's very, you know, shallow, like, very, like, kept to herself, but she shows – you know, with her game of how, how much she, she can do. And I look up to that. Coach, Kesley was one of your first recruits in your recruiting class your first year. How have you seen her grow throughout the years? Well, the growth has been tremendous. You know, when Kesley was in high school, she was a, a, a spot-up shooter. Um, she led by example then. Um, they did things at her high school that the high school had never done before. That's one of the things that really um, attracted her to us. Um, but then um, to see her growth uh, as a defender, um, it has been astounding, to be honest with you. you know, she's, she's, she can really guard one-on-one, um, -on -one and, and she's a great team defender. And she also puts it on the, on the floor a little bit. She's a much better off-the-bounce um, player. And, and we just um, we feel like she's just uh, what, much more complete than we first um, got her. So really grateful that she chose Dixie State. Kesley, coach mentioned your defense there. You're known as an extremely tough defensive player. What's your mindset when it comes to defending the ball? Um, when I, like coach mentioned, when I first came in, defense wasn't my strength. And um, I noticed that defense was something I could control. My shot wasn't always falling. And so how I would, you know, boost my confidence and help my team after a miss, for example, was to stop my defender. And so throughout the years, that's been my mentality is to stop my defender and get you know our team going and things like that. London for you I know you're majoring in nursing how do you balance basketball and a career in nursing? 
Well, it's it's been a path for sure. It's something that, you know, wasn't hasn't been easy. Um, I'm still trying to, you know, balance school and, and basketball, but it's, you know, it's part of the grind. And so I'm just, I'm just, you know, working hard at it. So. I also want to talk to you about Burns Arena. What makes it such a hard place to play in for opponents? Um, shoot. I guess it's just the day, you know, uh, the day they come in, it's, it's, I don't know if it's the Burns Arena or, you know, if they didn't scout us well enough, but <laughs> regardless, yeah, I mean, that's just the gym. It's a, it's a beautiful place, Rachel. Yeah, we're really grateful to have Burns Arena, and um, we're, we're looking forward to, to making it a formidable place to play for sure. We'll look forward to it. I'm now going to send it over to Michael Neverette for media questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Um, we'll go ahead and get things started with Chris Thompson. Uh, for Coach, this has been a year uh, unlike any other, I think, to, to say it nicely. Uh, what's been the biggest difference in how you prepared for this season versus years past? Hi, Chris. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, you know, you're right. Um, <laughs> it's definitely been a challenge for all of us. We, we, we're trying to keep it um, as simple as possible, trying to keep everything simple. Um, and then we also talk about finding the good in everything. Um, Cause there's so much, as you, you all know, I guess maybe bad around us. We just, we're, we're trying just to, um, to not focus on that. And so keeping things simple and finding the good is kind of um, the approach that we're, um, we're trying to take. Go over to Chris at the Spectrum. Hey coach, uh, starting this year, I'm, I know you played BYU in the past, but um, I was just kind of curious. So what does it mean this year that you get to play them on the same level uh, as the division one competitor now? I, I don't know. I, you know, to, to be honest with you, um, Judy and I have worked this deal out to simply, um, I guess, give the, the community um, the opportunity to come watch BYU. There's a lot of BYU fans here in St. George. And, um, and so it's, it's, um, it's, it's twofold, I guess. It's an opportunity for our team to, to play against a really top-notch program. And then also for the community. Um, and they're actually going to come back again next year. Um, that, that's just a recent development since there won't be fans of this year. Um, so we're looking forward to having them in St. George back-to-back -back years. Kyle McDonald. Hey everyone, this is Kyle McDonald with Wacoose Digest. I, I, this is for all three of you can answer if you want. But, you know, you had the most wins last year since 2011, 2012. Now you've made the jump to Division One. How do you keep that momentum going, knowing that maybe the competition may get a little bit better this year? I'll go if that's okay first. Yeah, um, yeah great question. Thank you. Um, you know, I think, um, I think it helps, Kyle, that, um, that I have a little bit of Division I experience. I think if, if I hadn't spent a little time in the Pac-12 and the Big Sky, this jump would make, us, make me a lot um, more nervous. And, and that's no disrespect to the WAC because it's, it's got great coaches and great players and all that sort of thing. But um, I think I have a decent idea of what we're getting ourselves into. And um, um, I... I think the players that we have, the, the, the um, strides that we've made, even Division Two to now, um, will still allow us to, to be competitive um, and possibly competitive right away. And uh, we're excited about that. We're excited about um, showing you all that. Go back to Chris at the Spectrum. Hey, Coach. Uh, again, just um, looking at uh, what you guys have, obviously you lose, you, uh, lose Allie, and that's uh, one of the biggest scorers in program history. But um, I guess this, kind of, this goes for everybody, too, is how are you trying to replace uh, – I don't even say replace her, but just kind of fill that void that she leaves, and not just as players but as coaching staff. Are you kind of shifting stuff up um, offensively, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allie was a good player. Yeah, we, you know, I um, – yeah, Allie was, was one that really um, – I felt like she made herself um, into the player she was. 
I don't, I don't see Allie when we, when we brought her in here as an ex, like a, a talented player, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't think she's a division one player to be honest with. And that's no disrespect to her at all. Um, she got absolutely the most out of her abilities and that's what we're all trying to do really. I'm super proud of her um, for that. Um, I feel like the talent that we have now is more division one like, um, and um, like when you see a kid that like one of our, our freshmen or sophomores now, when you see them, their senior year, like Allie was, I, th I think you'll see a significant difference in terms of um, just talent and, 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 and better players. Um, I think it, all, it, it, there's no secret to this game, right? This is all about players. And, and, I, and I think we have division one talent um, on our roster, whereas in the post, in the, in the, in the past, we necessarily haven't. Uh, Paul Coro. Thanks. This one's for London. You saw your, your brother play in the WAC at GCU, and now you unexpectedly end up in the WAC. So is there some sibling rivalry there about achievements and stuff like that? <laughs> no, no rivalry, uh, but definitely excited. Um, you know, sharing that, you know, the WAC and the conference and just being familiar with it, it was, it's really something cool to share, so. Are you as uh, outgoing as Preston in personality and swagger? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I guess there's only one way, way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's the quiet, tough type, Paul. She is uh, feisty and as tough as they come. We're really glad that she's, uh, she's a part of our group. Okay, we'll go over to Kyle McDonald again. This question is for Kesley. Have you played against a lot of the players from Utah and Utah Valley's roster? And how excited are you to maybe renew some of those old rivalries with those players? Yeah, uh, one of the girls, uh, it's one of their centers, Josie Williams. Me and her grew up playing together um, against each other. She went to Roy High. Uh, I went to Box Elder, so just down the road. Um, I'm really excited. Um, it's like, you know, once you step into those lines, it's game on. But outside the lines, we're really good friends. So I'm really excited. Okay, back to Chris at the Spectrum. Yeah, Kesley in London. Um, what, what does it mean to you guys that you get to uh, play some of these bigger Utah schools now? I mean, you, you get to be on the same level and you can be good, compete against these uh, like SUs, Utah Valleys, and that kind of stuff now? Um, it means everything, honestly. Just having the opportunity to play, um, it's – it just means a lot, and we're just so excited to, you know, challenge anybody, and especially the Utah teams. Um, I know that Kesley, you know, is from Utah, and so she's, you know, really looking forward to playing Utah teams, and therefore I am too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, over to Chris Thompson. Thanks. Uh, this question is for Kesley. Uh, your senior season was kind of in limbo for a while. Uh, what was it like to hear that start date get approved and know you're able to put that Dixie State jersey back on again? Yeah, it was really exciting. Um, as you mentioned, yeah, this year was very, very unpredictable. Um, but it's like I mentioned that we're not taking any day for granted. Um, you never know when it's going to be your last day. And so I'm really excited about it, hearing that November 25th start date. Um, really excited to compete with, with this team. And a question for London as well. Uh, Dixie is headed down to UNLV uh, this year. Chance that there's going to be some fans that, that would be able to attend. How cool would it be to get to play uh, in front of friends and family at the D1 level? Oh, it'd be so cool. Um, I'm stoked. I I can't even wait to, you know, play UNLV um, itself. I I knew I know a few girls on the team and, and so, you know, their families and my family, they'll all come out and it'll be It'll be a great time. Okay, one more for from uh, Chris at the Spectrum. Yeah, London, you were so close to a triple double last year at a couple points. Um, uh, now heading into this year, how are you planning to elevate your game, uh, especially with you know the, the with COVID going on with D one um, being new things, being an all around player? How are you hoping to elevate yourself? Yeah, um, any way that I can fit, you know, I, I have a role and. I wasn't even thinking about a uh, triple double, you know, within my games. I didn't even know I was close to one. I just, you know, I just went out there and performed in any way I can to help my team. And so, you know, if 
if it happens to come close again, it's just because, you know, I just wanted to, you know, get that last rebound for my team or, you know, pass it to Kesley over there. But just, yeah, just try my hardest. That's all. Okay, head coach J.D. Gustin, Kesley in London, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.